And so all we can do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the Counter-Strike as all of the inner workings of these machines will be hidden. We go back into just the individuals on your screens. It's simply a name representing the human that's dedicated themselves to the passion that is a video game to the point where they are professional at it. G2 and Mouse clashing tonight. Let's get this one underway. Visor in. Kenny operating with a bit of utility. Two flashes. And a kit. Looks like he will be heading over towards middle now. So it might be used with Hunter to go for a couple of peaks. Flash set up. Hunter has a little look over towards alt middle. Oh, that's more than he bargained for. I can't believe he didn't get punished at all. Frozen was holding it and a jump confirms it. That's a lot of info. A lot of teams like that sending someone, even if it's just a quick jump into the apartments or through boiler, just to get the information as to anything. An early presence in second middle. A very slow start here from Mouse. I do love me an armored P250 though. And on the man with the plan, it is Rop. So set him up a couple of jewels, see what he can get on away spotted. with. Hello, Hunter. Some info for him. He's been their little canary in the coal mine throughout this. Taking a couple of extra risks, leaving him at the front door, confirming danger before it strikes. Well, this is looking like a B finish with the utility left over from Mouse. What do you reckon of the stack, Chad? You like it? At all. It's very, very passive, but there's likely there's not firing really squad. Be Molotov. So this is great. They can actually just use the range of these USPs and P2K, but Romps might want to level the field. He would have to hit some absolute bangers. And it looks like they're retooling. 50 seconds left. Back over towards A. They're going to trundle down Banana. The bomb's still on Carrigan's back. Smoke's ready to go. Chris J. No early first. warning sign here. The only real chance would have been a Kenny flash up to brackets looking for info. But they're coming so fast, I don't think he's got time. So three players still dug into B. Hunter will have to be a hero. Oh, baby. He's going to get double swung on by Glocks. This is a hard duel for Hunter. And yeah, walking in left eye. Chris takes his head clean off. And Kenny... Oh, he's found a very important headshot. He knows he's potentially pushed by Bemis. Tucks in, accepts the fate. The bomb will go down. That's Carrigan tucking in and getting it done. Kenny, big challenge. Needs to find Bemis, but look at him scarpering into the site. He's kind of given him a second lease of life. Jackson Nico up brackets, Chad. They've got a retake, and they have got the kit, so they can run that clock down. No utility. It's just coming down to the jewels here. Body's on the line. First contact, Rops. Peppering Nico more where that came from oh. and a clean one. That's exactly what Rops is known to achieve. Jack's coming from the balcony. That's an important one and a flurry of frags. Nico next are now. Frozen reveals his position, but he hits them all. It's only Jax. Has to step up. Doesn't have the time for this. Doesn't have time for the duel. The round has gone Mouseport's way. He'll get away though, saving himself a kit. Kev. Oh, oh what? Yeah, too close to the bomb, you could see. Miles away. Yeah, it was a deeper plant. It was a deep plant, true. Uh, unfortunate there. It would have Jax. probably been fine. And that would have been the perfect way to kick off the game for Jackie Boy. Unfortunately, not the case is Chris J. We get the first person replay of him punishing Hunter towards the end of halls. I'm surprised all the utility wasn't oh, used. Oh, of just course there. he does. Myth has got a standing, standing desk. desk. He's it, such an adult. It is. You follow the guy on Instagram, he's up. He, this is the thing, people aren't familiar. Myth <laughs> lives in Denmark. He was coaching Renegades who are in Australia. The time zone is ridiculous. He was getting up at like four, five o'clock in the morning, going for hikes, making himself some porridge with strawberries oh, and blueberries. I bet he bloody was. Everything like that and still coaching the boys all day. So going to be interesting to see his impact on mouse sports. We're not expecting too much today, but this flash from Nexa. I Nexa. kill for team comms. Need it now. Yeah, Nico. Oh, a chance. It strikes, but it's a little too late. Cheeky Bemis. Bemis making all of that sound cue to bait out the util. <laughs> and now he comes back on the flash. This is great play for mouse. That's naughty. That's simple, uh, but that's mouse sports just completely taking an upper hand through utility and that's Kenny taking it through brutality a quick one and done Deagle to the side of the head that's nice keeps it traded and there are three SMGs in play so a one Deag certainly not out of the realms of possibility doesn't matter about your helmet it just matters about pulling that trigger and pulling it precisely Kenny tucking in Jack's to bait him in could be vulnerable to short though and that's where Chris J is currently investigating well, they fluffed the What's smoke. That? Yeah, yeah that looks like it's a complete absolutely flub. missed. So that's just going to cover off. He's got off arch. Reveals that there is threat from Boiler. Isn't Jax it? will address it. He's actually thrown his own smoke into Boiler. Look at this. So he smoked quad side. Chris is going to disrespect that as much as he can and leans towards long. So again, a 2 2 split of the CTs. Jax looking for info. Gets more than that. He takes the head off of Rops. Shot. That's a prime candidate eliminated. That's the AK 47 as well. 30 seconds now. Need to get a move Here on. There they now, come. Sports. Jax is Deagle primed. And here they come, a wide swing, takes two shots, doesn't want to fall foul to murder here. They're sweeping in, all three of them. Eventually he does go down and oh, recovered Kenny. AK. Kenny's completely flubbed his lines there. And now Mouse flipped the script, the same deep plant. Nexus from library with four seconds to spare. Hunter coming in as well. Now the clock extended, courtesy of the explosives. 
Bemis is so low, but his mission, I mean, that, his mission started at Banana, if you'll remember. Yeah, he's done very well, Bemis. Five HP, three kills. How many more can he get? That nade is oh. great. Hunter's going to think, oh, I'm going to take that AK. Although he's going to think better That'll at that, do. but finds the AK. That's a fantastic weapon for him to carry through. And at this point, it looks like they're just going to be backing off. More than happy to put down their guns, allow Mouse Sports to post the second. Alex, I have something relatively exciting today. What is it? Oh, Nexus found another, so BMS will fall, only on 5 HP. I've actually, I know this doesn't sound very exciting. No, no, but you've, you've already built it's it up. It's exciting to me. Yeah. I updated Skybox. You did? Uh, yeah, it looks much fancier now. Is so this... I, I can't wait till we have a clip. I want to make sure it works, but I can't wait till we have a clip. To it's show. likely we see it in the first half. There's so much weird stuff with Skybox at this point. I could even go like in eyes, POV. Uh, uh, They've actually made the game so you can jump, well, made the, made the this program. Kind of POV. Yeah, it the looks a bit janky, but, yeah. but they've basically made a game of the game. Game of Counter Strike in the game. Yeah, the the next level over there. This is a tidy start here from Maus. It almost got out of control, but back underway. They're going to carry in some more SMGs. UMP for Carrigan, MP7. See the likes of that Mac 10. Hunt is about to be flashed in. Same again. It's the same flash. Does this get traded by Bemis? Nika was trying to retrieve. He's going to get dunked by that native. He's not careful. Tucks himself in. Great recovery. Doesn't take damage. And Kenny's same peak. A late mid one. And Jax confirms his presence apps as well. This feels like the same A hit from Mouse. And Jax is trying to retool. They're wrapping long this time. Well, oh, the rotation's coming it. as well. Yeah, and Rops is the one that's recovered. Excuse me, it's Nexa now with the AK-47. Rops is the one pushing up quad here for Mouse. He can do a lot of damage oh. here. And Jax's Deagle's looking great tonight. Great damage inflicted by Kenny. He's keeping their eyes turned, and here comes Nexus to strike. Doesn't find the second. It's frozen. Pair of frags making things competitive, but he's tucked into that mini pit. He's got no options. The smoke eagle eight is escape. He's going to try and strafe with the knife out. Those speculative shots do not hit, and so suddenly B is the name of the game. A rotation. It'll be a fast one from Jax. I do think frozen will oh, be Kenny, there already. This is nuts. Pushing through the Molotov. That does give him an element of surprise if he could just catch Chris. Oh, yeah. He sees him. Confirms his one towards the instruction. Slipped the net already. I'm not sure if Chris is ready for him to be so close. Jax has even smoked coffins. I kind of like it. Chris will react. Perfect. Space to be taken here. Kenny unarmored, but a huge threat. No kits. I like the Molotov from Jax. He can actually stop Frozen from playing so close. You'll have to be on the coffin. Careful now. Frozen surely not going to spray. Chris wants to have a look. Held the line. Difficult now for Kenny. He's run out of time and he's run out of life. Well played by the two of them. It's frozen, finding three frags. He really bailed Mouse Sports out of that one. It felt like two rounds in a row they needed an individual to do that. You had Bemis in the previous, frozen in that one right there, and Mouse Sports dropped to the 3-0. But G2 have looked threatening here in the early stages. They get a chance now to get their big guns oh, out. Yeah. So I assumed he'd be close. He already pushed up to... Do we call it Moto or Mini? Everyone gets upset. Do they? Yeah, oh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, so there's, you know, old heads have what have they're like swapped because there's a mini pit in pit now as well. Yeah, I, I see. That's the thing. We never really had a name for that one, unfortunately. I kind of like Moto being that little library cut out, but it, it doesn't necessarily make sense from the highlight itself. We speak a different language anyway. We can uh, we can we settle with Moto. We want. People well, people can get there. Yeah, they know what we're saying, and you know exactly how this one's gonna go. Kenny holding A and full rifles in play, so. Hunter's got long on lock. Hunter does like to set his Kenny up for a peak. And in fact, he's doing it dry here. He's considering it at least. The flash. Off the flash. That's the flash from Hunter. So now they have the brackets info. Chris peeking in. Kenny, perfect. Counter strafe does manage to find the accuracy onto Chris. And then one man down. Disappears. Carrigan. There's a very tight line. He could be peeking into Hunter there. He'll peek off the flash. Kenny is blind, fires off the shot, and Hunter's down too. So much info off this. Ke Kerrigan's going to start calling quick. It's only Jax. Kenny's so locked out. What can you do? They're mollying him already. A lot of pressure here. You need to have some impact, Jax. He's burnt down, sprayed down to 10 HP. Just survival at this point. Kenny has managed to catch Frozen. That was the bomb crossing, so pressure relieved a little. Rotation's still super slow. Nico's in CT. Jax, 10 HP. God hey, damn, another. Kenny's caught another. Now pulling out a smoke. Finally, Jax has fallen. Pressure relieved for Bemis, but he's lost Stop his the teammate. Ace. Kenny's doing it all. There's only one man left on the site. Anyone trying to cross up short into his line of sight has met Kenny's orb. He's found his form.
And that's Bemus' head trying to take the fight. Close the gap. Don't want to let this one slip away. Bemus can do this. Molly's great. Forces him in back into an expected position. Now being flanked and just totally tightening the noose. Perfect retake. G2 thanking their lucky stars. They got Kenny on form today. Yeah, very good stuff from Kenny there. Was able to find the gap with the smoke. You can see there's a library smoke. There was the deeper arch smoke to facilitate a mid to B. But library towards side, that was well and truly open. And some of the keys here, if you didn't watch the Astralis versus Mouse Sports Inferno game just the other day, Device went 8 and 0 oh in terms of opening jewels on the CT side. If Kenny can find similar success and pick off Mouse Sports before they can take too much territory, go for their smoke gimmicks or execute, might be punishing Mouse within the early stages here. So that's a great start from Kenny. As we get back underway, Mouse Sports will be opting in with a buy. Galil, two AKs, a Tech 9, and a Deagle. And this time, three players through second mid. Just one over towards that of Banana. Beamus throwing out some early utility to hold them at bay, keep their information as limited as possible. And now with four players in old middle, they might be setting up for an execute. And this is what I'm talking about. Kenny staying in transition, looking for kills, trying to find an early advantage for G2. Yeah, it seems to be his objective. There's no doubt that's, that's definitely a game plan. You've seen him try it with the Deagle as well prior to his Zoom Banger equipped. Carrigan's got his nice lineup for us, and they are going for a full eight. Spread three through the apartments. Jax has got a tingling sensation. He knows that smoke's coming out of his hands quick. What's the cue though? That might be it. Here they come. And Chris Chase just run him down. That's not great. Hunter yet to really fill the feed. It's his chance now. One kill so far to his name. A fake plan. Oh, he's revealed his location. Now swung on. Carrigan caught. No bullets. Oh, it's enough though. Using the four of them. Now six. From the scavenge, Bemus AK doesn't reload. He holds his nerve, Rops is on default, smoke fading. A chance for Hunter for more, and he's used them for the perfect third frag. 15 HP oh. as he takes down another. They're just taking it in turns. It's Hunter to take the ace. Five scalps are fixed to his belt, and a second round for G2. Wow, they just kept coming his way there. That is two huge back-to-back -back individual rounds from G2. Kenny and Hunter showing what they've got. Look at this. Around the smokes, around the sight. Carrigan not ready. Bemis gray screens and now just isolating jewel after jewel. Rops only had a deagle there. And this final frag just stepping on down, making it look as easy as you like. Big stuff here from Hunter. And that's the type of start you are looking for for G2, knowing that their individuals are extremely loaded, extremely stacked. If they can get their confidence under them early, especially on the CT side of a map like Inferno, might spell disaster for Mouse Sports. They've been pushed down just to the pistols. It's going to be Chris J operating with the Deagle. Everybody else onto the Glocks. Ooh, Ooh. Nico's got a, a pink dot. He didn't, Rush didn't even warn us about the crosshair check. He's just throwing it in there. Chris J's got a good, respectable old man crosshair. What's Rops working with? Ah, of course. <laughs> All the other four quite similar. Hunter. Oh, Kenny, we're not going to see yours anytime soon, are we? Jackson, Chris J's are very similar, just different colors. Outlines looking the same. Yeah. You can tell what type of players they are with the bigger gap. But also remember, ladies and gents, boys and girls, it is to do with the resolutions as well as Nico up on the half wall. Takes a bit of damage. Poked on down to 59. We'll drop back towards the side. That spurs next to stay in rotation. Utility has been bled out by mouse spots here, and that's the name of the game. Keeping the bank balance honest, getting the bomb down or a frag, that would be even better. And Chris J, well, he's on 29. That Deagle, it's going to be difficult to make it sing here, but pivoting. Nexa finds one. Nico able to swing out off of that contact. The dot working wonders. Another head ripped away. Oof. Make it a third, and Nico just looking at to style on them here. Even no, I've changed kill. my mind, actually. I'm getting a dot. Yeah. You're going back, to, going the back to the dot. I had my... you have the fuzzy tennis ball? Or was I, that Lauren? That was RPK. Okay. Yeah, RPKs, I, I was kind of doing my RPK cosplay for a while, yep. if you remember. And I, I was actually remember. fragging significantly better. But yeah, Nico, you can see how pinpoint precision into those heads on pool. He gets all of them. Look at that. Lovely stuff. Eyes of a hawk. <laughs> Just processing that we've seen uh, three back-to-back multi-quad kill, if not aces, uh, from the G2 individuals to put three rounds on the board. That I can literally list the players that won the three rounds that are next to G2's logo right now. It started with Kenny, then Hunter, and now Nico. Oh, Kenny started off again. Maybe he's off for another one. As the multi-kills keep on flowing, and Mouse Sports struggling to get going after the, the flurry of three to start here on Inferno. This is Mouse's pick. 
There's a couple of ways they can start dealing with this AWP aggression, but it's not going to happen in this round here for Mouse. They need to start playing as a bit more of a unit, set pieces, have the utility early, and try and push the AWP back or overwhelm him. But Kenny, he's got the pick towards B, and now he's rotated towards A. Four players for G2. Two on either side of middle. Very fortified defense right now as Hunter wants to go searching. He's going to see boilers clear. Nobody in holes either. And if he pokes his head out towards old middle, God, my cap drops. This could be the pants timing down. of a century. See you later, Ops. Oh, furious as well. He can rotate back towards B now. Why not? You got the info. No one else was with Rops. He was trying to sell something. Yeah, Nico's put two and two together, and he's got, believe it or not, four. Here they come. Commitment into B next. Adoni has a flashbang, but that Molly pull will segregate. Chris is already on the site, though. They won't be able to join him. And that's enabled Hunter to get this flank much faster than Carrigan was ready for. He was just considering it. Hunter's already there to strike. Chris walking through a smoke. It's his only hope, but he's just made a sound cue. Nexa's going to have heard that. Oh, he even hears it. Chris meets Kenny's orb and frozen not too long. Very well done there. A good info play from G2. And that's something in the past that I always used to like to highlight with their CT sides. They were always searching in transition. If they had lost territory towards brackets, maybe they were looking towards top banana or going through halls. Just always having a look to see what they can find. And here's another opening from Kenny. So we really want to keep our eyes on Kenny and how mobile he is early. And what I was talking about with Maus, being able to deal with that, being able to stifle Kenny. If you're a bit earlier on your intention, if you're a bit cleaner on how you want to approach these rounds, or faster, Mouse definitely have the ability to go quick, go for some rushes with Tech Nines, then you might be able to avoid getting picked off. Or if you get picked off, be able to take the space to get the trade. If Kenny is just allowed to pick from top banana, pick from top mid, get one and get away, you're going to have some real problems here. And you can see the scores on the doors within the early stages. Hunter, nine kills, eight for Kenny, five apiece for Nico and next to Jax with four. Five for Frozen on the other side, four apiece for Chris Jam Beamas, two for Rops, one yeah. for Carrigan. It's the first time out taken. And this is about time where we'll start to see uh, the, the Rops resurgence. If I was just recapping his last few deaths, he was like the, 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 the final headshot on that pool round. It was only Tech Nines. He was also caught by Kenny Zorp on the balcony. On Against that Hunter in the side of the Eagle. Yep. He hasn't had the dream start. You can see Carrigan's got a nice preemptive smoke to uh, stop any of that util and keep that sound cue flowing. It is half by territory, and that means they could overwhelm Kenny. You can see a perfect reaction. Drop a molly, slow down the pressure. Kenny tucks in. They've been loving this set piece where they smoke off towards pit, and right now, no one is towards bike. Jax is Ooh. close. He's just pivoted in now, so the smoke's over. Away they go. Fast up quad. I like it. I really like the strat. Hunter, however, seems to have found the answer. Ooh, good dink. Maybe Jax is vulnerable. They drive by into the site. Carrigan does trade. They need to get that bomb down, but they need another frag. They know Jax still has pit. Kenny, don't play with fire here. Oh, nice. Jax has actually caught them as they elevate. Pushing in. Kenny, close quarters. What's he got his knife out for? There's, I think he thought it was over. And now, Frozen's got a Kenny's orb. Surely not. No! Oh, oh! It's the wall bang! Kenny, red faced after this one. Nexa bails him out. My God. That nearly was a disaster. And those are the mistakes. Ooh. Those are the mistakes we said would happen. We are, oh, we've got players that will jump through those hoops if they're presented. Frozen nearly does. That wall bang onto Jax. My Lord. Thank you, Nexa. Can we see that again, please? Replay operator, please and thank you. That was some wild stuff right there. The fact that that got so dicey after how it clean comes. it looked. Full shoot. I don't think he even realized he got it because he looks back. He had a little look back. <laughs> He's just like, oh. wait, did I? Wait, what? <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, this one's kicking off in style. Five to three scoreline now. G2. And to build a bit of a bank and a bit of a lead. He did, uh, did Kenny, what's going on? Uh, did, he, did he think it was... <laughs> Maybe it was Miss Comps. Yeah, still. Kenny's not going to be thrown off. He's been a fantastic string in their bow. He's stuck around for a frag. Oh, Ooh. timing. Not on his side after this one. Well, at least Mouse have found an opening finally, but Kenny wants to level the playing field up. He is staying in limbo right now. Still aggressive towards middle. We'll have an opportunity. The Jiggles with the X-ray. We can pick him. We can see him. Kenny, staying for a very, very long time now. Halls and Boiler could have been taken, but he really wants this frag. Gonna get it. Ooh, he gets his chance. That's two chances for Kenny. He's sticking around. He wants more. They'll surely flash you off this line, Kenny. He's so hungry. Horny and hungry. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Thank you. Jax is even more so. What are you up to? You horn dog. Oh. He's got it. And he's taken the frag and, they and can't disappeared. Peak. They can't because Kenny's holding the other line. They've worked out how to disrupt mouse spots here. They're not respecting them. They're not giving them the territory that they've earned. Yeah, and they have to explain themselves to Daddy Carrigan afterwards. Like, listen, Kenny had the... He was holding middle, so... I couldn't pick. I couldn't peek. I didn't want to die. I didn't trade. I didn't want to... 
Sorry, someone grab the bomb because that right now is down in the chicken pit. It looks like Carrigan's having a look for it. And there you go. Solved it. Solved so the mystery. With 35 seconds left, they have enough utility to execute onto the A or B bomb sites. They know that they have banana control and they've had trouble getting past this AWP. Nico now starting to cheat over towards A. A bit of a call coming out of the G2 camp here as they stack on over. Smokes have landed and they have to push up quad again. Jackie boy playing anti. Oh, that 15 second mark on Kenny's first shot. He actually gets him in the smoke. The bomb. Okay, Jax. Hold your nerve here. Finding one in the flashbang and all the frags come in in quick succession. That's a lovely six round for G2. And in fact, that is six in a row. We haven't seen Mouse Sports be able to make too much impact after their flurry of three. Yeah, looking good now, G2. Bit of a wall being erected. Obviously, there were issues against Frozen just previously, but... When presented with an opportunity, G2, they're either sticking around and they're forcing the fight against mouse spots. And this is what we wanted to see. We knew the individuals... Polly being extinguished gave him the uh, the shadow. The occlusion there. That was the uh, quite nice. You get lucky with that every now and again. Yeah, I'm surprised teams haven't found a way to master it and exploit it. Okay, so the AKs are back out. Still no AWP to contest with Kenny. And Oops. usually we talk about that as one of the strengths. Even yesterday I did. Or straight up middle, oh, Frozen's no. found an entry. Yeah, Jax. Trying to get his util into the apartments. Comes out a little slow and already punished. Oh, Kenny S is going in to get info for free. Oh, did a little sketchy. He's jugg juggled with Chris J. And now they know that Brackets is lost. Oh, I like this transition in the mid round. They're going to post Kenny back over towards B. He's got B. so much util. Yeah, he can even search for a kill. He looks very active at the moment, Kenny. So I wouldn't be surprised. He's got the perfect timing. Just as he arrives, they, so do they. Drop his incendiary into pool. It's a perfect start. Does make things dicey. Nexa has yet to reveal his location. Flashing. Flashes. Oh, oh no. Nexa stabilizes. He knows he's under a lot of pressure here. Drops his smoke. Chris finds him. It's actually Bemis. Kenny's been caught as well. Good damage through the smoke. Rob's brought down to a competitive standpoint. But where is this retake coming from? Nico's going to smoke off Banana. Chris won't be able to contribute. A molly from Hunter towards Emo. Bemis will be forced to move. And they go on the flash. It's good. Bemis burning. Does have a safe haven in Nemo, though. That kind of screws him. It's off the single flash. The Cousins looking for a 2v3 retake, and he lines it up. Kits on both. They've got a chance here. And that's the first frag. Nico's found it. Bemis still Emo. It's Chris. They'll have to trifle with if they find this frag, and they have. One just has to hold him. Hunter doesn't have util, and he's actually going for the hold. Surely Chris just peeks in. One, two, and three. Oh, hasn't. my God. Oh, they ninjas. Pros do not fake. Hunter steals a seventh round, and Chris feels like a bit of a fool. Balls are still there from Hunter just to go for that one, knowing that their money's good, knowing that they've just gone for a two-on-three retake on the B bomb site. You don't see that every day of the week, especially not in the first half. We've been talking about percentage counter-strike all throughout the year. G2 have thrown that out the window, and they've stolen another one away from our sports. And that feels like that's their whole game plan here today. Stay aggressive, stay looking for opening kills, and take some risks, because they're rattling mouse sports here. Scoreline now seven to three. The plant is good, and mouse can get back underway with a buy, but they need to crack this nut. Early smoke out towards Banana. Nades in exchange. And you can see Banana Control isn't on the agenda for G2. They don't need to push out. They don't need to get problem. Banana Control. They're just able to sit back and defend. And normally we see teams struggle when they go for this approach. But here he is, Kenny. He's everywhere and nowhere, is Kenny, yes? Hmm. Seen the balcony clear, seeing it all might entice him in. There's not too many sound cues, but look at this angle from Rops. If he was to peer on out, Rops would have the advantage there. We posted him as one of the highlight players, just two kills so far. And you can see Nico in transition, very flexible, back between next over towards the B site. I can understand why Mouse, Mouse have ended up here. And look, Kenny's coming too. So it's the pace. Oh, they're, they're fumbling. And now there's a three-man setup on B. Oh, good nade. Bang. Look at that. Molly as well. They have to go forward. Okay, and a dink. This is getting very sketchy now, and Kenny continues to be a thorn in their side just as they start their push. They're not looking for him. Nexa. They're looking for him. Nexa already reveals his location. He's caught Beam as the great Molly to stop the push and swing. Looking for Carrigan. Spots him and does damage. The Molly's still there. Oh. Carrigan catching both. Now Mouse Sports should have the fourth. The Hunter and Jax go for this. We just saw Nico and Hunter pull off something magical. It is another two on three, similar situation. Yes, utility, and they're fast, and Carrigan's taken another. That's going to stall this one out. Great round from Carrigan. If you didn't catch Kenny on that second transition, it's a, it's a different round. It felt like right place, right time for G2. They had the stack, they had the utility, they did a chunk of damage. And as they forced forward, Bemis hits a bit of a banger to open up the site and then Carrigan, the in-game leader, will finish it off. So they needed a round here and that's some inspiring play from the captain. Despite G2 kind of having all the right pieces in the right place. Yeah. That's an achievement for Mouse. 
So they have been really just running into the CT side of wall or getting picked off by it. And now that they've finally been able to break through, they can work on cracking down the G2 economy, which we can see is relatively built. When this bomb goes off, the loss bonus of 1400 will be added to those bank balances and all of them will be able to buy. Kenny will need a drop of an AWP, but that's no problem. There's plenty of cash for Hunter, Nexa and Nico alike. And mouse spots, well, they won't have any issues whatsoever. But the curious question is, do they get the AWP out on Chris? He's got 7K, could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kenny. We've seen him be aggressive. We've seen him looking for picks. Chris could punish that, just like Carrigan did here. Straight through the smoke, lovely head on a pivot. <sighs> well, we take them. And now it's about building upon them, because this can send you back down a nasty spiral. With a pen and standing desk. I've never seen a more coachy coach. Yeah, just need to put a suit on him. And yeah, that's uh, the next step. The He's ready for the LE LEC. <laughs> Looks like we do have a bit of a technical issue here, guys. So bear with us as we iron out the kinks. As I say that, of course, the time starts ticking on down. So we've already fixed it. That's how good we are here. We call it and we fix it immediately as the buy now should be coming through momentarily. There's only seven seconds left and four members of G2 yet to buy. Here we go. Next is purchased in. Timeout called. Okay, well, Malik wants to get involved right now. You don't want to let this one get out of control because if Mouse string another one on the board, then your money's really in dire straits. The scoreline starting to get closer and closer. So something I, I you know, often you see a, a natural inclination when you lose a B round is let's go get Big Banana control early. Yeah. And to do so, often teams invest three players to that early B lead. So the questions that could be going on now is, are we doing that? And the question mouse sports are asking themselves is, if they are, can we get that info and punish it? So they've got a couple of options here, right? They can fight fire with fire. They could go all in. And if they're expecting that banana play, you can win or lose the round just taking those fights towards top banana. Whoever comes out on top of those duels, more than likely yeah. to get away with this. To note, Kenny has the AWP, and it currently looks like he has a spawn more towards middle. So I don't think we'll see him lean over towards B. There is three players departing to be off spawn, though. So we've got Nexa, we've got Hunter, and we've got Nico. They want to get stuck in here. Nico with a smoke ready in case they get mollied out of position. It doesn't look hyper aggressive. Just wanting sandbag control and the mollies to dissuade them. BMAS is going to get naded on down. Crowd control with the utility good. But BMAS really wants this. He wants to get stuck in. Yeah, and that goes in favor of Nexa. If Nico and Nexa can bait them in, that's a molly that will force BMAS back even more. He's really done well to take very little damage considering his health. Off the nade. Oh, there it is. As I say that, Carrigan and Bemis are left with scraps of health remaining. But look how much utility is being expended from G2 within the early stages. The damage is great, but they're now operating with two smokes, no molotovs with a minute and 10 left on the clock. And Mauser heading over towards A to get mid control. Yeah, but Kenny's very quick to want to take that back. And look, at they, they, they fired a couple of shots off. It's pretty trivial. And I think Kenny may have a sneaking suspicion that he can just walk on up. This is great info. Yeah, boys, unless they're long, which I don't think they are. Back up B, and Hunter's on his way. Flirting with the idea, at least. Rops the lurk, throwing out util, perhaps to... He's only got flashbangs, won't sell it very well. They're heading back up towards the B side, and Hunter is in a position to support them. 40 seconds, he's second-guessing himself here. Lying in limbo. They have one smoke for the cross. Chris has to be the one to get oh, that down. Another one low now. Next has dropped his smoke defensively. Chris is ready into pull. Hunter with a high flash, they'll fight off that. Bang! And there's two pull flash. Nico doesn't have anything but the kit and the M4 he brought into this round. And he's caught through the smoke. A big opening. They're so low, though, and that's a chance. Needs to transfer. Where is Chris J? He's got no bullets. Nexa with a P2K pushes in. A crucial frag. Takes Chris J out, and now it gets awkward. Carrigan, bombs loose. 12 seconds. Rops to support. He has to win this duel. He hasn't. And Rops, nothing. Really? Oh! Unless he gets the bomb down now. No time. Jax, by virtue of the clock, has won the round. Oh, a few more seconds there, and Rops could have had that down, giving him a one-on-one -on -one against Jax, who was stuck towards CT. And Rops needs to get activated. We spoke about him as one of the stars for this Mouse Watch team. He's not one of the stars. He is the star. This kid is an absolute animal, but so far kept quiet. As he's walking, wounded teammates made it into the bomb site. You can see three players on 10 HP. They just were whittled down with ease, and it wasn't enough here for Rops to get stuck in. It was good kills. It was good damage. But it's not the round, and I think that reaction of Mitha is probably very similar. Rops was the player watching the backs. Maybe he should have changed with one of the low HP players and got stuck in, see if he could find a couple of trades. Regardless, Mal's be back onto the buy. Three towards Banana again, a different foray of utility being used. Willing to limp out a couple more Molotovs now. The follow-up nades. Carrigan whittled down again. Needs to be careful here. Nico wants more. We didn't even talk about the storyline of Nico and Carrigan now on different teams. Phase aren't even in the conversation. Yeah, there's definitely history between the two of them. Pressure on A now, Kenny. Ooh, actually managed to tag Chris. He is getting pushed. 
He spotted off another great move from Kenny. Take a shot, fall back. It's textbook. Carrigan slipped the net though. He's in A. Oh, Rops is about to get flanked. They're pushing apps. I love it. Rops is not expecting oh. this, but what a reaction from the young Estonian. Keeps him in it. Need to see Jack's trade. He knows he's low. Wallbang would work. Hasn't found Rops just yet. In fact, Rops gets next to the comms gap, perhaps. Nico's going to have to fill up the shoes. Oh, no. Jesus. It's getting sketchy. Frozen's low. If Kenny goes down, he won't. That was a wild round. Yeah. Everybody was everywhere. So, CTs were in the back lines, flanking the Ts on the side. There was players pushing up middle. Yeah, that was wild. There was a lot going on just there. They yeah, tell me about it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Well, that's nine now. Wow. This one is really off to a fire of a start. This is, I mean, this is dreamy for G2, isn't it? Considering the fact that this is Mouse's pick, if they can come in with anything more than nine, my lord, is that going to get under Mouseport's skin come into their defense? Their margin for error will be so slim. Great stuff from Kenny. And Rops is a reaction, keeping him in the round. It was a 3K in the end, though, from Kenny S. Wrapping things up. And uh, second time out used. You get four for each map. Using half of them here in the first half already. Mouseport's in pursuit of six. The half considerably won already by G2. Have a little look here. Chris has finally brought out the AWP, so wants to stop Kenny from going for these type of duels. But if he just gets flatlined, if Kenny just out orps him here, that's a waste of investment. We will have four AKs to complement that. The utility is still good. Mal's operating with this max loss bonus. They need to get threatening now as they have finally whittled G2's bank balance down. If they beat them here in this one, it means going into the final round of play, they won't be operating with a full buy. Not so much onus on the banana aggression right now, but Bim is still copping a nade straight to that front door down to 61. Very important round here. They boosted. Or did they? Or am I misreading the map? No. So Jack's underneath. Hunter actually going investigating. I thought they might have gone for the quad boost. It's so annoying, G2. They're constantly in transition on this CT side. Any territory that Mousebots want to take, they have to work hard for it. It's not just flashes. It's not just nades to get it. And this has forced them back towards B again. They've been able to get in towards pool, but having a rough time cracking the site down completely. Remember when they won the gun round, Carrigan had to have a couple of special kills, even one through the smoke. That's right. So the utility at this stage for Mouse with a minute left on the clock, out of Molotovs, and look at Hunter going for info. They can rotate that third man over towards B, but Mousebot's going quick. They are. It's very quick, but the volley's great. You can see how much damage that inflicted to Carrigan to punish the rap. He gets through. His teammate went down. They're falling back. Yeah, Kenny's going to have to try and find Carrigan through the smoke, though. He could get caught out by this. Feet almost spotted there. Yeah, but Kenny's going to get punished if he's not ready. Carrigan, what a rascal. Catches him by surprise. He's going to keep the B players there. They're practically forced to save as Carrigan, the gatekeeper of the rotate. Great, cho great choice. Great decision making. They pivot back to A. The frags all go their way. It's a double kill from Rops. Yeah, that's a big risk from Carrigan, right? He loves to go in first of the in-game leader to make space for his lame stars. But look at this. Not only is he making space, he's winning the rounds and taking away these guns, ripping them out of the G2 player's hands. And that bank balance I was talking about, it's getting quite low. They should try and hunt Nico with at least one more player. Just see if you can throw a body at him. I'm sh I am know that the money's not great for, for Mouse here, but if you can take a gun away, especially an AK-47 from Nico, means he won't be able to drop one over in the next round. And their buy is going to be more hamstrung than it would be. Chris J posted up. Will he get off at the duel? How far does Nico want to push? Looks like he's just going to park it up here. And that's going to be the fifth on the ball for Mouse Spots. They've had to work hard for this. And that was Rops getting two kills in transition. Hunter looking for info over towards the window room. And then he pushed up middle and killed Jax on that arch side. So Rops was instrumental in the fifth round for Mouse. You can see all that's done as well to G2. So nice to close the gap here a bit. Six compulsory for Mouse if they want to have an easier path towards that mount win on their pick. I think they'll be happy with six as well, considering how they've been made to work for this, how they've been forced to fight in a lot of these scenarios. Yeah, look at that. MP9, CZ. They've been able to get two rifles, Hunter and Nico. A pair between them. Smokes are good. Solo B AK. It's not ideal, but it certainly is viable. Especially with the man who's holding He's it right now. He's got a flash for Nexus second mid look. If you're wondering what Hunter's about to do, it's uh, next they're looking for some form of info. Nico dropping his incendiary. He's being pushed. Oh, no, just like that. Mouse have cracked into B. A deep smoke. That's a great call. Garrigan's got a good read as to how they wanted to play this. And he's punished it accordingly. Frozen's gotten across with a bomb. Hunter's got very minimal line of sight, hoping to catch one as they cross. Another smoke. 
get through one, get through the other. It's the final round of play. Look at all the nades left over for Mouse for this post plant. More smokes to drop, two more mollies, a bunch of flashes, hate cheese as well. If G2 want to get back in, they have to wait through the storm of this. There's that utility. There's the frag though. Frozen needs more. Good shooting. Oh, nearly three. Kenny eventually shuts him down. It's just the two of them. And an AK upgrade for Kenny. He needs to go fast now. No kits. Carrigan confirmed it. It's his round. It's Mouseforts taking six. They will be happy with that, as will G2 with the nine. Swap sides and getting ready for the second half. We'll be right back. Second half of our first map of the day. G2 and Mouse duking it out. Myself and Sponge shouting about the Counter-Strike that unfurl unfurls itself before our very eyes. And uh, Chatty B, 9-6, a competitive half, would you say? Yeah, a bit of a pause champ here. Not quite sure which way this one's going to go. Did I use that one right, Rush? Say that again, sorry. Oh, OK, don't worry about it. If it did if it did said stick. it was a bit of a pause champ. I don't even remember. Did we have a pause champ? Yeah, pause champ. There's some pause champs going like on right now. You wait till you see this buy. This is a pause champ. Okay, hold up a second. He's excited, Ooh, everybody. Now home. we're champing. We got. To, what wasn't that? That right. pause champ. You're right. Rush has oversold that. Anyway, Julies. Julies. I'm going to stay away from the emoticons and uh, get no, into the I'm game. I'm a Julie B push. Come on. Okay. Well, that's a chance, and that's a even trade. It's changed Jesus. by Hunter. He just clicks on two heads, and into B they go. All right. Bombs going down. Bemis and Rops. 
very segregated. Is B must... Okay, there we go. Mine just... Uh, Minimap wasn't moving. When in doubt, rush B. Yeah, it seems to work. That was how the uh, last round of the first half finished. And the beauty of it is, is if you get in rather quick, you've got all that util to dump. I say that. Kenny still has his flashes. Oh, great shot, Robs. Back into the site now. Hunter was the hero to get them in. Maybe Robs could be the hero to get them out. And oh, he hurt. He hears it. He knows that Kenny's tucked it on Emo. And Kenny brings the fight to Rops. That's a surprise. Wasn't ready for that. Bemis confirms his location. Now the crossfire is established. Hunter's even working on the flank. This is G2's round, boys. Nice finish there from Kenny. So two for Kenny, two for Hunter, and one for Nico in that foray onto the B-bomb side. And that's going to be the pistol round. So they are sitting pretty. But they might have to weather the storm of a mouse sports force by. Great way to kick off the second half and a great way to... Almost net up their first map. It will be the map choice of Mouse Sports here in Inferno. We'll be moving on to Dust 2, an action-packed affair, which is G2's pick. Both teams are going to be solid on that one. wonder if we get another Nico performance. Absolutely monstrous stuff to get here against North yesterday. But it will be this force buy for Mouse. You can see Deagles and the Scout. A couple of smokes, a couple of HEs. Early utility out towards Top Banana, and Chris is going to gobble that up. Force back by the Molotov. Won't be able to go for any picks or tags. As G2 now, they just work the map. Nobody over towards second mid as Hunter's now dropping on back and regrouping with the team. And now that they have banana control, they will still need to clear out towards Sandbag. And Chris is actually reinitiating. With a scout, no less. He tags Nico's bottom just as he leaves. Yeah, get that and get out, I think. That's some good confirmed damage. As, you know, at least one player is towards banana. You would have an inkling there's a few more. They've actually rotated Chris over towards A as Carrigan's going to drop out a smoke. Will this stop G2 and hold them at bay? Carrigan believes that's going to send them to A. Frozen still has a smoke as well here. So this is going to buy them into roughly 40 seconds. Frozen will have to drop one more, but then it's the decision making of G2. Do they respect it? Do they push? Do they stay stoic and just wait it out? Chris has even found a kill in the meantime. This is great. Another B smoke. They're going to go B. They're going to finish B here. Nico, Jax, a smoke as well. They go on the flash and Frozen, he's actually tucked in underneath them. They're on top of each other. Frozen has the element of surprise now. He's gone unchecked. 24, he could even deny the plan. Jax's responsibility and that's the headshot. One already. Oh, a great shot what? to Kenny S. Yes, Frozen, he's definitely had his cornflakes this morning. And trying to plan his jacks. The last bullet doesn't connect. He gets it down. But so low. This is an impossible task to defend. Nico and Jax. I mean, a combination of aggression is required here. And yeah, just on the edge of the smoke, he's been spotted. Jax needs something as the smoke fades. Well, they're flopping it. One. Yeah, they're low now. Bemis is being pushed from every angle and he's gone down. They've got time for the defuse. Good bounce back here from Mouse. Very second necessary. Round force. Yeah, they take that. They'll take an AK under. I think that's an M4. That second shot there from Frozen was absolutely M4. wild. Yeah, lovely. Very, very huge stuff there. And yeah, look, you're right. They were actually having to jump over his Ooh. head just to get side access. This one here. Bye. Jesus. Okay. Well. It, I mean, it makes the game more interesting. It does indeed. That's a, mu a much needed win for Mouse. The plant means we're likely to see the Force by Wars continue here. After losing that one there, but getting the bomb down, G2 can continue to buy. They will. Deagles, Tech Nines, a Mac 10 for Jax. Maybe a quicker round on the cards here is towards second mid. Three will go fast. Nico wanting to see if anyone peeks middle on him. No scout for Chris J this time to go for the fight, go for the biff. Early utility here from BMS, and it was well timed, well placed because they're going through it. Yeah, they actually smoke it, so he's forced that out of them. Oh, Garrigan's got a lot of pressure. He catches the jumping SMG, but doesn't. Anticipate another. Kenny going down, though. So, next are losing the bomb to Chris. Chris has had a lot of impact already. It's only Hunter and Nico. One in the balcony held by Rops, and Nico's trying to smoke off the library, but that bomb retrieval just feels like an impossible task. You got a one deke for me, Nico. That's kind of what we need. Yeah, nice well handled roll from Chris. He's handled that whole round. And Rops finds the tip of Hunter's head. So, tapping away at that. That force buy goes nowhere. Game on now because it will be the eco from G2 here. A chance for Mouse to get the ninth on the board cleanly. And clean is the name of the game. You want to start building that CT side of bank. You can see how Chris has already gone about that. 6.2 after reinvesting. And it looks like he's just going to go with the standard Deagle buy. It's a classic Chris J play. And it makes sense. They know they're going to be up against the eco. A P250 at best right now. Unless anybody as they leave spawn from G2 wants to reinvest. But no, that's not the case. So 
Should be a relatively easy round for Maus, unless they get overrun. Leading the charge up middle will be the in-game leader, Nexa. BMAS ready to drop this early Molotov again. He's just tucking in towards quad. Rops is looking for information. This is into the blender. Straight up mid they go. Beam is spamming down. He's got two. Rops is here to mop it up. Jax will eventually take him out, and it is just Nico. Christian with the flank gets the kill. And now the scoreline 10 to 9 in favor of here G2. Here we go. So it will be the five AK 47s. They'll grab all of the util they could possibly find from the caches and get ready to try and put the first weapon round on the board of this T side. They picked up the pistol. Second round force go Mouse's way and they've converted two off the back of that. That was just the eco after the, the failed force. So, gap closed. That's the beauty of winning that second round, especially as a CT. Really does help you fill the coffers early and they're actually using a bit of a bonus here. Still keeping that Galil we saw recovered in round two. Wow, that's a lot of util. Nico, cops are nade to the dome. They can do the second wave as well because they had to import two players from A to make that happen. Space is taken. BMAS oh, almost caught out there. Tucks into the site. Can set up the crossfire with Rops now, but pressure is on towards A. G2 have already taken brackets. They've taken a lot of liberties, and Nico is holding two players quite comfortable over towards Top Banana right now. So this is good from G2 as they've already fanned out. Offensive smoke from Carrigan here. It's going to hold them. Uh, brackets for now, and Carrigan getting up close and personal with the Galil. 35 bullets to put through that smoke if he feels necessary. But just parked up at G2. You know, not making the smoke. Carrigan's uh, aware of the vulnerability, and so opting for long, so he has the info and can get away. It's a good crossfire they've set up now, Mouse. This is a really hard duel for Carrigan. Yeah. Gets the info, though. Ooh. Oof. He's actually choosing to re-peek on the flash, and... Jax gets away nicely despite the loss of vision. Rops is flashed on that balcony position. And that's the swing. Oh, confirms Rops' location, catching him as he jumps. This is great from G2. Beamer's under a lot of pressure. The trades all favor the T side now. They have the advantage and they have the sight. Couldn't have gone better. Frozen's in the spawn. Chris is working through mid. He's even thinking about second mid. So Frozen's death might just confirm it. Almost fluffs his lines there. Next, they're down to 31. But yeah, you're right, Chris. Jay. We'll have to save at this juncture. One on three, retaking the A site with the bomb. Almost halfway ticked. Probably not worth it. But that was just bodies to get onto the site there. There wasn't a whole lot of utility used from G2 to pressure A. It was pushing Carrigan back and then just clamping down. Pushing up quad, pushing around the arch side, finding a couple of cheeky kills. As soon as Rocks goes down on the balcony, that's all she wrote. So there was no clear indication. There was no early tell. You didn't see the smokes coming over the wall. There wasn't waterfall of flashes towards pit. The B defenders weren't able to get an early rotation. And that's going to be the 11th now. The buy from Mouse Sports, it's going to look good, but I have some questions. They want to bring up an AWP. Chris J would be the one to do it. Doesn't look likely as... It's actually Carrigan who's invested in there, or maybe wanting to use that over towards the art side. You saw in the... Fashion, he was just bullied then. Mm -hmm. Just swung on, space taken. They even tried to re-aggress with a flash, but being so low on HP, unable to land any shots there. And away we go. Three players towards top banana this time. Carrigan's already parked up with that AWP arch side in case they want to come fast. Look at these stack nades. Anyone makes a step at the top of banana, they'll throw them out. Waiting for a Q. Nico's given him nothing. Happy with his gap. Frozen lining up for the smoke. And he'll throw the molly as well. So that does basically guarantee no one is ahead of that. You can see the molly would have either forced them into their line of sight, which he checks, or they're behind the smoke. Yeah, good stuff there. That's just going to hold anybody at base. So the utility exchange there actually works out in the favor of G2. Mouse don't get any information and they cannot get the territory back. Sure, they make G2 burn a couple of extra molotovs, but they're still under pressure. Carrigan maintaining top mid control with the AWP is good, and this nade, uh, that's not great. Nico, plenty of time for him to backpedal from that, only takes six damage, and at this point, G2 have already got one big check mark in terms of map control. They just need mid and brackets now. Smoke's over towards the top, might be selling a bit of a fake. More towards the site. Carrigan still has full vision. This is gonna feel like an A. And it might even be an A. Charging into Carrigan's position. He's flashed him off, Hunter being held. He strafes and does catch a tag. Carrigan, they're trying to wrap B. It's rare to see. We've got a full banana split coming in here. And Frozen, he fancies a treat. He's got himself Hunter. Finishes off the job of Carrigan's orb, but needs another. That's the bomb. Great shooting from Frozen. 
One more would confirm it, and Jax gives it to him. Oh dear, Nico and Nexa then. Suddenly this feeling a little bit more awkward than it needed to be. Nico does open up, and that's a big win from Frozen. He's practically won the round single-handedly. There's no time for Nico, and no health either. 4 HP, Frozen with a quad kill to confirm the round. That is one way for a B defender to earn his credits. Not too shabby at all. Frozen even recovering himself a nice AK-47 for his troubles. Well, G2 and two of their gun rounds have clearly had an indication they want to lean towards Arch, and that might be trying to punish Carrigan. They've been able to slip the net. They've been able to take a lot of room. In this case, they actually let the clock whittle down where it was a lot of pressure. You can see here these kills as they're coming through mid to B is already down to 20 seconds. So once Frozen stops them and doesn't get traded, he's basically run the, won the round as soon as that bomb gets dropped. But that arch side could be a pressure point. And the question is, does Carrigan want to fortify it with more of his members? Does he want to leave it open? Is he happy to allow G2 to go for mid to Bs just like that? Does he think that Frozen and Chris J can defend against it time and time again? Those will have to get answered as we move forward because G2 have limped on him with a partial investment. Nico still does have that saved AK, so he'll be looking to be a bit of a crowbar in round number 22. Now Sports win this. They tie things up 11-11. Gordon Freeman crowbar. See their stance changes a little bit when Chris brings the orb to B, but similar as always. And Early utility deters middle. They've got a little bit of a chance on the double smoke. Could be just be your real basics. Chris J though, holding a tight line and Nico meets his demise. That was the uh, pointy AK-47. They'll give it to Jax. Because you want to give him the same treatment. Does look like this will be the B finish. Carrigan still has mid control. Smoke towards CT. Looks like they're going in. Oh, great stuff. Kenny goes down. Crosshair placement, pinpoint, perfect. And a great flash again. Chris has done everything here. Sets Frozen up for success. And this has gone nowhere for G2. Looking like an equalizer. Frozen with another multi-kill, three in total. If they've identified that they're up against two orbs, which I think G2 will have, we might see a change in approach here. So we know that Chris J was orping towards Banana. We know that Carrigan's been orping that arch side. They might want to overrun Carrigan again because if he misses a shot, he has to drop back. And that's already been a key towards A. So maybe not a, not a free pick, but a pressure point that they might continue to abuse. Or they can try and get a little bit quicker up over towards B and try and force Chris J into a peak that he's not ready for. Even sending your little attack dog of Kenny S out to have a heads up AWP duel right now. Never mind, no AWP for G2 operating with five AKs. And that's something we saw a lot of Kenny just the other day on Nuke on the T side using that AK more than the AWP. As Chris J has been naded on down now, we'll have to reconsider the angles he wants to peek. This is a bit more methodical from G2 than what we saw from Maus. It felt like G2 were taking a couple more risks on the CT side and Maus just had to sit back and wait for the opening exchanges. Whereas G2, they're getting their banana control, they're getting their top mid control, they're going for their set pieces. Never really getting into a mid round. Yeah, I see what you're saying. That pace change hasn't arrived, as you hypothesized. Happy to keep it slow at the moment. You can see how they're just willing to operate in this 5v5. They're not searching for a pick. They're just trying to push them around with this utility and hope that mouse bots bite down. So Jax has been sent up middle on his lonesome. He's got control of brackets, and now they're getting ready for the BX cube. But will it be a pounce? It looks like it. Not super telegraphed here. Yeah, Chris is holding the, the close walk up, and you can see the power of that line. He doesn't choose to pull the trigger on the flashbang and now still finds a gap, still finds a chance. A double from Chris J, practically winning them. The B shutdown, that's already enabled Carrigan to rotate. Nexa does find him on the flank. Chris is vulnerable too. Maybe G2 can turn this on its head. It comes down to Jax's frag here. <gasps> Robs has got the reactions. Jax is going to be kicking himself. Nexa, chance, minimal chance, but it's a one all the same. Frozen could be holding him. Chris baited in. He knows that Frozen's on new box. They're playing this to perfection. Nixa with all of the frags and Kenny's caught Robs. One second to plan and they get it down. Overcoming the odds. This is a crazy hero round from Nexa. He's even picked up an AWP. Try crossing now, Bemis. I dare you. Oh, okay. So the smoke's still up. So Kenny can't really contribute. Bemis will have to cross the line of sight of that AWP though. 
Good. He's not that good. G2, four kills from Nexa. He just demands a round and he gets it, takes it by force. Yeah, we were talking about G2 and their individuals in the early stages of their first half. We had a Kenny S round, we had a Hunter race, we had Nico yeah. with a bit of an Eco slot. Everybody delivering in buckets and spades and the in-game leader for G2 needing to do the same thing here. I thought Christian had done enough. Look at this. Not afraid of that smoke, not afraid to take those when peaks. Jax's flank didn't catch the rotate, I thought that was booked. Well, this is the thing, right? They knew that Nexa was towards this position and the trust was in Frozen to cover off. He's actually slipped the net, killed Chris J, even got the follow-up, and that's where that round fell apart. So Nexa with some absolute heroics here as we get the fans in the fan cams. If you want to join them, iam.gg slash fan camp. Discord to get on in with the boys and girls at home. G2 have some spotty rounds here. You can see they won the pistol, they lost the force spy, they were able to get a gun round on the board there by punishing the arch side, wrapping onto A. And now the most recent was through Nexa. They can string a couple together. They can break the bank balance of mouse sports here late in the first map. They will be able to reinvest. AWP again for Chris. This time Carrigan just operating on a rifle. Utility not fantastic. Only two Molotovs. Very important round for this game right here. And G2, they don't want to get stuck in and take too much damage towards Banana. This time quite passive as Hunter up towards Boiler with a UMP. This is a great weapon for the job. Wow. Makes it work. Wow, Bemis has actually lost that duel, and so suddenly Chris J feeling a little less safe. Oh, and Hunter's taken Yikes. them both down. An aggressive orb. What an upgrade. You take that. $1,200 SMG catching a fully bought up M4 and orb. That, I'll tell you now, I'm no investment banker. That sounds like a good investment from Hunter and Nico's only added more to the list. It's all falling apart here for Mouse. This is a huge round to lose, and not in this fashion. Yeah, you don't want to break this one down and just be able to dismiss it as an oopsie, especially considering its implications for the map win. Oh, I like the gap. Rops has managed to find his building info as well. Here's Jax. Can catch him off guard completely, but this is all a question of how they handle that info now. Four versus two. Nexa managed to win one just the round prior. Maybe Rops can find a little angle. Oh, he's got so many angles. He can't stop Nexa. Oh, Takes the head what? off of Kenny. What a shot from Rops. Now Frozen's rotating in. He's still got space around the flames. Frozen advancing, does have a smoke. Hunter's holding the line though. And that's a frag. That's the important one. Now it's all onto Rops. They know where he is. It's down to G2 misplays at this point and Nex are not gonna have that. Triple kill from Hunter. The multi-kills are just so evenly distributed. Yeah. Everyone's taking it in turns. Looking very nice for G2 now. Look what that's done. Uh, bank is broken. Rops is the only one in touching distance of a buy. It might just have to be the save here as Mouseports will take their third time out of this one. And able to get behind this smoke wall, even able to hit that shot into Kenny. You can see there with X-Ray off just how difficult a shot like that is. Hunter's even going to maintain this UMP. They're not even operating with a T-side AWP. It's four rifles and a UMP. That's an interesting look in for the next round of players. There are some big questions to be asked. You can either force right now if your mouse, see if Rops is able to use a rifle and grab you a couple. Player conservative, know that the loss bonus isn't going to be fantastic moving forward. Big decisions. Mithra on the mic right now. It's his debut with them in the server. And the timeout has transpired. Five seconds left. It will be a save. Mouseport's not going to invest too much just yet. Means that G2 are looking good for their 14th. Rops is actually brought in with a Deagle. Kevlar, Carrigan, P250, and a Smoke. Not operating with a lot here. It could be enough. I'm never one to write out a mouse sports ridiculousness or a G2 slip up. We've seen plenty of those, but yeah, everything pointing towards one thing and one thing only, a 14th for G2. So just taking it slow here, you can see mouse sports, not with a heavy investment over towards B, it's just the USP, P2K, Carrigan's coming over now with his smoke and P250. They can't really face here. They've given up so much time and territory. They're just going for a boost, but look at Nico. He's just walking in. Oh, that's way too easy. Flash and go. Ripped him apart. One more on the bomb site. It's just Chris J trying to see whatever he can find. It won't be a lot. Yeah, you give it a good go though. Not going to be seeing any 10 second ninjas here either. If you had a kit, I'd, I'd uh, had some faith. Looks like Nico is going to do his due diligence. <laughs> he does hit the dink with a P250, uh, P2K. 
Uh, beam is gone, and that's finished it all off. Rob's hanging out on A. He did invest, so he doesn't want to lose his uh, Deagle and Kevlar. Can't blame the man. He is being hunted a little bit, though. Jax likely gets the timing here, but Rob's is a bit of a gamer. Surprised they're hunting him here. Oh, yeah, he saw the barrel. You don't want to give him an AK. Give him something to carry through the next round. He's not able to hold on to it. Hunter bounding with that UMP. Difficult to hit. I wonder if Hunter's going to keep using this weapon. It's so strange to see someone as proficient as him on that AK operating with the SMG, but he's making it work. When you think about the round that broke the money, he had the opening two kills onto BMAS and then Chris J pushing halls with the AWP. So, yikes. Yeah, that round. That round, Hunter finding some serious impact frags on a UMP alone, and he has kept it, Chad. Okay. Well, he's built a bit of a bank off of it. That nade looks very promising. Does chip away at them, softens them up for an aggressive M4. Uh-oh, they're coming. Nico's fully flashed. The flashes do only set up for one, though. And Rops denies me a correct sentence. A good shot from him as he re-peeks into middle. They leave with an advantage. And that was what Mass Sports were looking for. Carrigan makes an aggressive call. Rops there to support him on the trades. And Well, G2 losing two very, very potent weapons in Jax and Nico. I think they're probably fed up of getting executed on right now, Mouse Sports. They're trying to take a page out of the G2 book. I think towards Top Banana, whittled down by early utility. He was over there in the early stages of this round. He's just rotated back over towards A, I believe. Yeah, it makes sense with the health. He can play pit, play headshot, play the safer, less likely to be hit site. Bomb is actually leaning B. And Hunter, oh, I don't hate this at all. He's pipped the gap here. He's found a complete and total gap. Bemis, you can see, he's paranoid about it, but it's about Hunter's pacing here. Yeah, this is all giving Hunter a lot of room to work with. So that fake on towards B opened up the gap, and now Hunter to search for a kill. If he finds one, they'll clamp down on B. If he goes down with two on the side, the other two can go get a 2v2 at A. So flash just to get them off the new box. Yeah. Nice self angle. You could see as Hunter was clearing his close corners. Bemis resolves the issue. 20 seconds then. Kenny mantling up. Bon Nexa needs to be getting that bomb down, but it seems like the positioning from Frozen is just too perfect. Time is just not on their side. They can't surely be punching the digits without checking Emo. Nine, eight. They find it. Perfect stuff. No time, and the frags come in. Frozen and Beamus tested, and they pass. Flying colors. 12 rounds found. Mouse Sports back on the horse, at least. Yeah, they need this next one to make it competitive because their economy is still up Struggle Street. If they lose one on the trot, it will be G2 likely to close this out in consecutive fashion. They've had to drop a, drop a couple of guns across to make this one work. And now G2 are going to take their third time out. So the coaches really having some impact here today, making sure that they consider their options at these key points and key junctures of the game. Frozen, very well handled there not to peak. You know, a lot of players would get inquisitive. They might go for an overstep there, but Frozen really just keeping himself tucked in was the key to that round. Yeah, even Bemis. I mean, I couldn't believe how vigilant he was being because it was only a maybe. Bear in mind, they didn't have info. They just knew it was a gap. They knew it, were, it there is a gap that Hunter could be walking through. And Bemis, with that, with enough information, he, he was vigilant and it works. It converts. Now, I said the key to that round was Frozen tucking in, but the real start was Carrigan pushing down middle in the two aggressive trades, yeah. one from Rops, one from Carrigan on the opener. Now, if they want to stop getting executed on from G2, they will need to have some more creative Can't looks. do that again, though, Jack. Yeah, but you can't just go for banana aggression either because G2 will just wait that out. It looks like three players from Mouse will be heading over towards banana, so they're going to look and see if they can do any damage. It really depends on what G2 want to greet them with. So crowd control Molly down middle, that's going to tuck them on in. Harassing with utility. Kenny's on fire. They've actually extinguished one of the mollies so he can now stand in the safety of that smoke. Here comes Frozen's first look. Oh, he's very lucky. I'm not sure if they're expecting an AWP. He's side AWP on Kenny S. Okay, so they haven't been able to find an opening pick, which could spell problems. I do see a lot of a utility though. So with an A Molotov and a smoke blooming on the arch, you can see that the three CTs on A are on high alert. Hunter making sure that this one looks convincing. Passive was the name of the game to mouse sports B defense previously. There's time pressure at the moment, 55 seconds, still a 3-2 split of the defensive resources of Mouse. Hunter trying to convince them even further with another smoke. Equal trades is not enough on B right now. They need to get a number advantage. All right then, Chris, you're flashed off. 
divisible, and they convert. Oh, both frags delivered save. by Nico, and that's immediately going to have to be the save call. Is it? What is he looking in for? What is he thinking? Oh, dear. What have they got? 1,900. That's Carrigan guaranteed not to have an M4. Oh, that was a rough peak to lose right there. And the fact that the B defender's got nothing, now the hunt is on. G2 can throw a couple of bodies at this. They've got residual cash on a few, so they can definitely have a look in. They know they've netted up 15. Now it's just about damage. The chickens, they're having a bit of a dance. They understand. That was Carrigan's brain. <laughs> That's all he could think of. Look at that. Yeah. He saw it and just couldn't process the retake. Uh, but they are actually truly looking to win the round with this hunt. I remind you, $1,900 is the lost bonus from our sports. They're boosting over the smoke. Can Nico see him? Okay, he's not going to play any silly games, silly games there. Oof, all right. Surprisingly, they didn't try and throw a few more bodies at them there. I know it meant they would have had to have reinvested, but you can see just how easy this was. Nico with both of them mopping them up, and then Kenny getting Carrigan on the rotation, not able to slow it down, and that is a bad one to lose. You can see the light little yeah, punch just, of the door. Just, I, uh, I was dissatisfied that, with that outcome. That was uh, <laughs> not something that you want to see happen, especially considering how hard Mousebots had to work for the previous gun round. And I will re remind you as he's there in your top right, Dust 2's next. G2's Dust 2 looked fierce. Nico looked fierce on Dust 2, and that is where they'll have to defend their honor and defend that their rights to a playoff spot. Final timeout called by Mouse. They burnt through two on the first half and two evenly distributed here in the second. All right, then. You can see the financials. You can see that the Mouse Sports are coming into this one as severe underdogs. I assume that AK is for Bemis. So they'll have three rifles and two SMGs to defend and everything that the T2 Esports squad could desire. T-side AWP on Kenny. Be intrigued to see how well he can utilize that, bearing in mind there is only one real gap in the utility of the CT, so it's going to be a question of how much they choose to use early. Three to be early, and Kenny just making sure no one fancies the early info peaks up middle. Deep banana smoke. Four Straight through remaining. it, look at that. Yeah. Trusting in their utility a smoke lot. Smoke achieves nothing. Yeah, so that's almost as a wasted $300 and maybe even gives Mouse spots some false information. They've rotated a fourth man over towards A. Standard stuff from G2 here as they do their default. They've got boiler and holes control. They're getting top banana control now. Hmm. Frozen is only operating with an MP9. He has been left on the B-bomb site with only an MP9. And G2 have thrown a bunch of different T looks so far. Different smoke walls, different fakes. Yeah, and they're going to have apps contact before anything happens at B. Look at this. Kenny is just looking into B right now with the AWP, just searching. Oh, my Lord. So Nexus is holding the CT swing, and he gets to do all of this contact walk up. Frozen, if you have a look, bro. Yeah, you're going to get orped. Bingo. First frag found for G2. Already in. Nico's taken another bunch of space. Yeah, Carrigan's going to run through that smoke. He's thinking about it. Yeah, he is. Kept the timing, but Nico's got the reactions. And just like that, Mouse Sports have three players left. They're charging through CT to retake. Bomb way back on Banana. Jax will be bringing that in late. They're just setting up for control, dropping their util. The rotate is in. 30 seconds, still no bomb plant. G2 cannot afford to slip up here. If Chris was to stop it, they re-smoke it. Playing with fire. Now you still haven't planted, bro. He knows the boost is a threat. Flash and go. And they've got the boost frag. Double from Bemis. Jax was trying to plant. Now it falls to Chris J. They need to get the bomb down. 10 seconds. 10. He's got a 10 bullets. And they find it eventually. Kenny S catches as the smoke fades.